Lesson 18 is on triangle theorems, and we have some theorems and corollaries also. Corollaries are statements that follow directly from a particular theorem. So let's look at the first theorem here, theorem 18-1. This is one of the most important and probably one of the most widely used theorems. Lots of real-world applications to it. The sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle, that equals 180 degrees. So if you have a triangle, and we'll call this triangle A, B, C, then angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. So of course that's in Euclidean geometry on a flat surface. That's what those would equal. Angle A plus B plus C equals 180 degrees. So this theorem is also a formula, and that might be a formula you want to write down in your page. If you have a notebook page that you're keeping formulas on, just say, draw, draw a triangle like I have here, and just say angle A plus B plus C equals 180 degrees. Now, I've mentioned this a little bit before, and you're going to cover it more in Lesson 109, but since we're talking about the sum of the angles being 180 degrees on a planar surface, let's talk about what happens on a spherical surface. And that's what spherical geometry is about, non-Euclidean geometry, which you'll learn more about in Lesson 109. And there, it's interesting that the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle does not equal 180 degrees. So we could put our little not mark right there. And these two pictures here, that's a Lenart sphere. It's used for studying spherical geometry. And you can see I've drawn a triangle there on the left. On the right I have the angle measures. Maybe you can see those. That one's a right angle, so it's 90. This one's 85. That one's 86. So here we have 90 plus 85 plus 86. That equals 261 degrees. So it's obvious there that the sum of the angles of that triangle it's greater than 180 degrees. So the sum of the measures of angles on a triangle in spherical geometry or on a sphere, that's greater than 180 degrees. So these theorems, it's important to realize that they only work, the ones we're covering right now, they only work for a planar, a flat surface. So this deductive system that we're developing, it's for a flat surface, not for a spherical one. On a spherical surface, there's different rules which we apply to find new things out. So let's look at these corollaries now. These are statements that directly follow from a theorem. And so we see 18.1 1 there. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another, then the triangles are congruent. So in other words, if we know two angles, we can figure out the third one because we know their sum has to be 180. So if two angles have the same angles, two of the same angles, the third are also the same. And then 18-1-2, we'll prove that one in Lesson 27 in the practice. The acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. So make sure you notice that that's for a right triangle that this works. The acute angles, they have to add up to 90. Since you have one 90 degree angle, the other two must add up to 90. And then 18-1-3, the measure of each angle in an equiangular triangle is 60 degrees. So you just think about it, if it's 180 degrees for all three, divide that by three, and that would equally split 180 into three 60 degree angles. And 18-1-4, a triangle can have at most one right or one obtuse angle. So make sure you're taking notes on this. You write these corollaries down in your notebook that will help you remember them better. And then we'll do some practice here in a minute on them. Theorem 18-2, let's look at one other triangle theorem, the exterior angle theorem. So the measure of each exterior angle of a triangle, that's equal to the sum of its two remote interior angles. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's just draw a triangle here, and let's just extend that side off of it. And we'll call it triangle A, B, C, D. So this angle right here, we'll call that angle A, C, D. It's equal to angle B plus angle A. This angle I'm marking right now, that's the supplement to angle ACD. The other two are the remote interior angles. So that exterior angle, it equals the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles. 
Well, let's go ahead and do some practice now. Practice problem A. See that triangle over there to the right? We don't know what angle X is, but if it equaled 45, determine the measure of angle B. So we want to figure out this angle right here, angle B. Well, we would just say 32 plus 45 plus angle B is equal to 180 degrees. So 77 plus angle B is equal to 180 degrees, and then angle B, therefore, must equal 103 degrees. Okay, so typical math problem, if you know the rule, then solving the problem is easy. So if we didn't remember that the sum of the angles in a triangle equals 180 degrees, we wouldn't know how to solve this problem. So make sure you memorize that formula. Now problem B, in that right triangle, DEF, I don't have one shown, but just imagine a right triangle that's called DEF. The measure of one of the acute angles is 35 degrees. What is the measure of the other acute angle? Well, let's just think about it. It's a right triangle, so we know two of the three angles. And anytime you're given a problem like this where they want you to find the measure of an angle and you're dealing with triangles, just think, well, I've got to know two of the three, so where's the information in this problem to tell me what two of the three angles equal? Well, I have a 90 degree, I have a 35 degree, and I'll just call the other one A for angle A. We know that that has to add up to 180 degrees. So we have 125 plus A is equal to 180, and we subtract 125 from both sides. A let's say angle A, is equal to 55 degrees. Look at problem C. In triangle EFG, determine the measure of angle EGH. So we need to figure out this angle right here. Well, remember theorem 18-2? According to that theorem, EGH should be the sum of the exterior angles there. So angle EGH, that should just equal 51 plus 55. And that's easy enough to do in your head. 50 plus 50 would be 100, so adding 1 and 5 to that would be 106 degrees. So there's the angle measure. Look at problem D. In triangle JKL, angle K measures 50 degrees, and the exterior angle at vertex L measures 110. Use a protractor to make an accurate sketch of triangle JKL showing the given angles and then find out what the measure of angle J equals. Well, just take a protractor and you can extend some lines off, just make a sketch to start with and then you can go back and erase. So here I have a line. Now I'm going to put a point over here on the left and call that K and I need to make a 50 degree angle off of that. So I'll just lay my protractor right on top of that and make a mark at 50. I don't know if you can see that up there but I just need to go ahead and make that line right through there. And then I know at L I'm going to have an exterior angle of 110 degrees. So I'm just going to put a point here and call that L. I'll center my protractor on that point and then I'll make a mark for 110 degrees up there. I don't know if you can see that, but then I just need to connect those two points. So now I need to label that K is 50 degrees and then L is 110 degrees. And just to erase some of that, clear it up a little bit, this is vertex J right there. And so we've labeled it like we were asked to do now. What is the measure of angle J? Well, let's just think about it. We know what that exterior angle is. It's equal to 110. There's a couple of ways we could figure out J. One way is that we could figure out this angle. It's supplementary to 110, so we know that's 70. And so we know 70 and 50 is 120. That J has to equal 60 then to get to 180. The other way we can figure it out is knowing that J and K are remote exterior angles. So we know that 50 plus J has to equal 110. And so 50 plus 60 is equal to 110. So again, J equals 60 degrees. And sometimes that's helpful to know that we can solve that problem two different ways. If we had different numerical answers for each method, then we'd know we were doing something wrong. Okay, let's do one more problem here, and 
This one says the architect needs to build an A-frame with a 30 degree slope. What must the measure of the peak angle equal? Well, let's just think about that. An A-frame. It must be shaped like an A. That's like how roofs on houses are built is with A-frames. So that looks like the letter A. And hopefully you'd realize that both sides of that, the angle's the same. On both sides, both of those angles would be 30 degrees. So 30 and 30 is 60 plus that peak angle, that has to equal 180. So the peak angle, I'll just call it angle P, equals 120 degrees. That's what that peak angle must be. Okay, so remember those two theorems as well as the corollaries. And that second theorem also, it's, it's like a formula as well. So you should keep that with your list of formulas. Write it down with your other formulas. Okay, well that's all for lesson 18.